In this week's episode, I am going to show you how we built this really cool epoxy table. I'm going to show you a mistake I made and how I fixed it. And you might want to stick around until the end of this video because we've got a really cool announcement we want to share with you. Starting this week's project off, we are going to build a eight seater epoxy table for one of our clients. Now the specific wood species we're going with is called Jackalberry and you can only source this wood from South Africa. It's a really beautiful wood species. It's got a lot of bronze, it's got a lot of red, it's got natural black colors inside. It's just the all around absolute beautiful wood to work with. And starting our project off, we're going to cut our slab right straight through the middle by using our HK85 face tool track saw. And as you can see, this machine cuts like a warm knife through butter. So on the side of our epoxy table, we had this very big, large, broken out cracks and holes we had to close. And I'm using normal standard white melamine sheets with some silicone on the inside, pressing it right on top of our wood and clamping it down to make sure that when we're going to pour the epoxy that it's not going to leak out. Now, I do want to apologize in advance. For some reason, I have lost some footage on this project and some of the coolest shots we had was where I was doing the pouring on this table, the preparation stages and making the shrill marks in the solid color epoxy. But nevertheless, we have to continue with this project. Moving to the next step in our project, and that's by cutting our table to it, its final size. And using the same Festool HK85 track saw, but you need to make sure that you change your blades when you're going to do your final cut. You need to have a fine blade, meaning that the blade you're going to use needs to have a lot of teeth. The specific one we're using, I think it's got 60 or 80 teeth and it's going to give you a very, very fine cut on the edge of your table. Now, if you're going to use a very rough blade, you're going to have a lot of tear outs on the side of your table where you're going to do your cut. And one thing we also noticed is that the blades, even your router blades, gets very dull very quick when you work with epoxy and you will pick that up very quickly as you start working with epoxy. Moving to the next step, and that is that we're going to insert steel C channels on the underside of our table. And as you can see, I am just changing my router bits to cut the groove into my table. And now just making sure it's the correct depth. And the one thing I absolutely love about the OA1400 router from Festool is it's got this ratchet system, which makes it super easy and convenient to remove bits and to change your bits very quickly. Now we're just starting to cutting the grooves in our table and I do want to encourage you, we invested in this jig that slides on top of the track saw that links to your router. And I can promise you, we had a super, super accurate cut and a groove cut into the underside of our table which made this part very, very easy. 
Now, the reason why we install steel seat channels on the underside of our tables is that sometimes wood does tend to move and the steel seat channels just helps it to prevent the wood movement as much as possible. Now, we normally tell our clients that wood does tend to move on seasonal when it's hot or cold wood can move now we never had this problem before but you need to make sure that you have the correct measures in place if you're going to sell a table to one of your clients and these steps that i'm showing you is what we do to prevent wood movement as much as possible The next step I want to show you is something I will definitely do different and also use the track method to cut the grooves in our table. And that is that we have to remove a small layer of wood between the two grooves we cut because we want our C channel to sit flush with our table. Now you're just using a flush trim bit and I actually have no patience when it comes to this and if I could go back I'll do it differently. But I ended up cutting two little small grooves on the side of our table. You can't really see it, but that is what you call that you're not patient. And I will definitely do it different next time. While I was busy with the router, I quickly changed to my 45 degree chamfer bit. To give the underside of my table a small 45 degree chamfer right around. This is just to smoothen the edge off and this is the overall look we like going with when we design and manufacture all our tables in our small shop. And another tip I want to give you is when you want to see when your blades are busy getting dull. You will see on the left hand side of the screen where I already routed, you will see the small little black marks. Now that's burn marks. That means that your blade is cutting, but it's a little bit dull. And, and you will definitely see that when the burn marks starts to get more, then that means your blade is super dull and you need to change it. Now for the fun part, to make sure that your steel sheet channel actually fits in the groove you just cut. And as you can see, it fits like a glove. Now moving to the next part in our seat channel installation. And we are going to use screws to hold the seat channel in place. Now I am just punching a small hole to make sure that when I'm going to remove the seat channel that I've got the mark where I need to drill to fasten my threaded inserts and we're going to use bolts and threaded inserts for the step and you will see the methods to follow. Now just using a 10 millimeter wooden bit to drill the holes and to make sure I'm not drilling too deep, I've got a small little masking tape to make sure I drill the exact same depth every single time. And just got the steel C channels back from the powder coaters because you need to make sure that you deliver a high quality product to your clients.
Now moving to the next step and in the making of this video we invested in the small palm router from Festool because the big router does tend to tilt a little bit when you get to the corners of your table and trying this machine out for the first time and I honestly do have to say this was one of the best investments we ever made. Cutting edges is made real real easy with a palm router from Festool. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank every single person that's supporting the channel and if you think I deserve it please hit the subscribe button like this video and leave me a comment down below what do you think of this project thus far and what would you have done differently. Moving to the next step in our project and that is by sanding our project down and we're going to start sanding our project with the 80 grit sandpaper then we're going to move all the way up to 400 grit sandpaper because we're going for a smoky finish on our epoxy table and the oil we're going to use is called Odis oil meaning that I can sand my wood down to higher grits. So for this project, we're going to sand the epoxy and the wood down to 400 grit sandpaper. This is a super critical step in this project. Now I know other oils like Osmo and Rubia Monaco, you can sand your projects down only to 180 grit sandpaper. And for this project, I am going to use Odis oil as I mentioned before. And we're going to apply the original Odis oil a very thin layer then we're going to leave our project for 24 hours we're gonna come back and then we're going to do another coat of the original Odis oil just applying my oil with a old orbital sander I've got lying around now what I absolutely love about this step is that the vibration of the machine is like massaging the oil into the wood one of the best steps you can use when applying your oil otherwise you can use your hand but we are manufacturing a lot of these tables so using an orbital sander is a quicker method So this was the mistake we made I wanted to share with you because we are not perfect as you can see those lines I'm pointing out has been made by the CNC machine and this basically happened because I rushed the sanding process when I started sanding with the 80 grit sandpaper and it's going to leave you that marks when you apply your oil. Now the way we fixed it is you have to go back and start sanding all the way down back to 80 grit all the way up to 400 grit sandpaper again now that's basically wasting time wasting product and wasting Odis oil and I just want to encourage everyone and I want to mention that the sanding process on your projects are super super critical now I want to leave you guys with the final product I hope you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week with another super cool video before you go after the final product we've got a really cool announcement we want to share with you thanks guys cheers
Welcome to this online epoxy masterclass. Moisture content. You heat right into the core of wood species to remove the bark with an aggressive steel wire brush. Table design. Slab preparation. Building process. Epoxy mold. Release agent wax. Calculate epoxy. Seven, eight. So we got 16 points. Mixing epoxy. Color consistency. Whether to seal your life edges or not. Pouring epoxy. Sanding between layers. Sanding grooves inside your epoxy. Dealing with bubbles. Maximum depth. Curing time. Removing the table from your mold. A local CNC supplier. Start sanding. Cutting your table to size and edge. Filling the cracks and holes. Smoky finish. High gloss see-through finish. Wood surface finishing. Tabletop supports to drill into our wooden section. Our online epoxy masterclass is finally here. It's four hours of masterclass where I'm going into detail on how we build all our epoxy tables. Where I'm going to teach you from start to finish how to build a epoxy table successfully. I'm going to show you all our methods and techniques we take in our everyday business building epoxy tables successfully. Down in the description of this video, you're going to find the details on how to purchase this masterclass. You don't want to miss this one.